What sailors do in winter? Hi, I'm Alan Stokel. And there's a fair nor'wester blowing out there, and Admiral Bulford is uh, outside looking for a scale. Uh, the rest of us are all cozied up by the fire with YouTube on our laps to keep us warm. On the days it's too nasty to sail, how about some good boat videos? There are a number of chores sailors can do in the winter. I'm going to show you a few clips, and if you're interested, I have the links to the videos later. First, how about redoing the varnished interior of your boat? This episode shows you some simple techniques to upgrade your wood. Surf's up! On this episode of This Old Fiberglass Boat on Grampian Marine, how to re-varnish varnished wood. This is the sole or floor of my sailboat and uh, since I made it, it's taken a lot of use and it was getting pretty dull and it's got scratches and all sorts of things. So I'm going to refinish. So here's what you'll need to complete this project. You'll need paint thinner, spar varnish, steel wool, clean cloths, an orbital sander, although this is small enough you can really sand it by hand, uh, 150 grit sandpaper, and of course those disposable plastic gloves. Notice um, there's no brush on this list. People have said that applying varnish is like painting with honey. So I've taken a tip from the Wood Whisperer and cut the varnish with 50% paint thinner and I'm going to apply thin coats with a cloth rather than a brush. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself actually. First, I thoroughly cleaned the previously varnished wood with thinner and fine steel wool. Once I finished that, I cleaned it off again with a rag and more thinner. I then started sanding. I used the pressure of the weight of the sander only just to scuff up the surface of the varnish. I'm not trying to cut the wood. Um, so I'm just trying to scuff it up the varnish that was uh, there before. Once the uh, sanding was finished I washed it again with a clean rag and thinner to get rid of all the dust. My soul has a hole in it. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> This time it's true. Uh, it's actually an inspection plate to have a look to see how dry the bilge is. Um, I had to do that separately, by the way. I had to varnish it separately because otherwise I'd never get it open again. And I almost didn't get it open that time. If you uh, can remove your uh, tiller without the rudder falling off, uh, you can also bring that home for uh, a maintenance and a refit. If you like, you can upgrade your tired old curtains with the easy to make rigid plastic ones or repair that marine toilet. Uh, I hate to complain about the videos on YouTube uh, and uh, my fellow video makers, but uh, I wasn't actually planning on making this video on marine toilets. Uh, but with the exception of uh, this video from uh, Jabsco, the content of the videos I watched didn't really have the information that I needed. I'll show you how to properly use one of these and I'll send you an instruction sheet that you can uh, post in the head for proper use obviously. But first I'm going to uh, replace the pump assembly which is the only bit with uh, movable parts in the whole toilet. So. Here are the items you'll need to do this replacement. You'll need obviously the pump assembly, a slot and star screwdriver, and the longer the shaft the better. A pail, a small bucket or yogurt container to hold whatever water or whatever else comes out of the hoses, paper towels, and some good gloves. Depending on the situation, 
you may have to sanitize the area around the toilet and uh, anywhere where spilled waste may have congregated. But uh, as we always say, plan for the worst and hope for the best. If your boat is tarped, winter is also a great time to replace your hatchboards. You've probably seen this new wood. Well, it's actually not wood at all, it's plastic. Recycled polyvinyl chloride. It won't rot, it doesn't require any maintenance, it cuts and shapes easier than wood, and it kind of looks like wood. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, it won't rot. <laughs> and uh, you can buy it in uh, 12 uh, foot lengths. And for uh, my boards, that was just enough. I uh, only have about this much left. Other materials are available in other markets, so check around before you buy. By the way, I thought it was rather expensive. Here's a big hint. Take any overage off the bottom board, otherwise your top board will appear unfinished. Now once I had the boards in place, I could fit them. They were a bit too thick for the channel of the old boards to fit in, so I, had, I have to route the edges. I haven't done it yet. Uh, I might still do it, I don't know. Um, for right now, I've just taken off the teak trim and put in spacers. Now, these boards are narrower than the old ones, so I'm going to have to epoxy some of them together so it'll be faster for me to take, put the boards on and off. I haven't done that yet, but uh, I will be doing that. And there we go, done. My old boat used to have one cigarette lighter socket to provide 12 volt power for the entire ship. Now I have USB ports everywhere to uh, charge and power all my modern devices. Here's a clip of, uh, of the video on how to do that. Now remember that LED lights are positive, negative, sensitive. So make sure when you connect the sockets, you do it properly. I've pretty much converted all my 12 volt accessories over to run on uh, uh, LED bulbs. And of course, most of the accessories do run through USB ports these days. So I've decided to add a lot more of these USB ports around the boat and get rid of some of the clutter in some parts of the boat for instance, in part one, you may remember me sitting here and the whole thing was covered with wires. Right now, I've just got one wire running up to my 12 volt fan. So before we get started, let's make sure we have the right tools. Uh, you will need a multi-screwdriver, a drill, bits, a jigsaw and blades, as many face plates as required, those automotive electrical components I talked about, wire cutters, a voltmeter, wire, and perhaps a soldering gun. Now, for much of this job, I use these automotive electrical fittings. They're a lot faster to use and don't require soldering, but several times I did find it better to use solder, so have that soldering gun handy. Now, I always give you a list of tools and parts you'll need for these projects. And uh, if you're finding this video useful, please subscribe and ring the ship's bell to receive notification next time we post a video. And please don't forget to watch the commercials. The other thing I love to do is to plan next year's cruise. I can start by uh, going to the boat show. It's a great place to buy things like boats, but what if you already have a boat? How about bits for boats? You probably need something. We have several videos like that that are on our sister channel, Budget Boat Cruising. There is a video on basic navigation, for instance. Now, this is the 21st century. So I'm going to be uh, using some apps on my smartphone or on my tablet. I have a review of a few of these apps if you want to watch them here. 
The new technology is great, and I love using it. But you know, when the shit hits the fan and everything goes to ratchet, you will thank your God for a chart. Richardson publishes this book of charts, and it does state clearly that they should be should not be used for navigation purposes. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> It's okay, because most people use an app anyway, so don't tell your lawyers. I use these charts because I like to know where I'm going. One of the apps may show you a few meters ahead, maybe even a few hundred meters on one of those tiny little screens. But a chart shows you the big picture. Keep that in mind the next time you run aground. And planning a cruise. There are also videos on several of our cruises. The Grampian Marine Channel is about getting and maintaining a boat. Budget boat cruising is about how to have fun with your boat. Please subscribe to them both and ring the ship's bell. Well, it's about time to put another log on the fire and try to find Admiral Bulford. By the way, I will gladly send you a Word document with all the hyperlinks to the videos I showed you and more. Please just email me at the address below. I'm Alan Stokel, and thank you for watching.